Hey everyone, my name is Mary Beth McAndrews. I'm from Guard Central. And I am here with Kimberly Sue Murray, the star of XYZ's new film, Traitor, which is basically a Safdie's brother movie, but even more contained and even more stressful. How are you today? <laughs> I am so good. I'm so happy to be chatting with you today. So, okay, first question right out the gate. Did you know anything about the stock market when you started making this <laughs> <story? laughs> I'm so glad that wasn't a prerequisite for getting the role because I know nothing about money or yeah. stocks or uh, numbers. Yeah, no, that is not my forte. See. But I did get a crash course. Our director, Corey, did give me like the basics. So I actually understood what was happening. Because I, again, like the movie gives you a crash course. And again, I think because I'm a journalist, I'm not a numbers gal. So I'm just like, I was I curious. Know. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, we were trying so to like visually make it as clear as possible because you can't assume that the audience will know anything about the, the, you know, stock market. But, you know, with the green and the red, it's like, okay, I get it. I get green. I get red. I, that was true. I was like, this, this helps my toddler brain to understand when yeah. things work. But <laughs> taking it back to the beginning, like, what were your first reactions when you read the script? Like, what were your thoughts about being able to play this character and being almost the only character in this entire movie? I, it was like, my whole body was like, I need this. I want this so badly. Uh, I've never done anything like this. This is terrifying slash an opportunity of a lifetime. Like when do you ever, I mean, there's only a handful of films out there that are like single room, single actor feature films. Yeah. And, and I just loved that the, that she, Trader, I mean, I, I call her Trader because I, I don't actually, yeah. I've never personally given her a name because I, I like that mysterious aspect of her. But uh, I like that she's an anti-hero. You, you know, you're you're with her, but you're not. And you're so, she's so morally corrupt. Uh, and so I just, I just desperately had to, to book the part. Oh yeah. Well, and again, like we don't see, like in, I feel like finance movies and movies about stocks, one, it's always very polished and two, it's always about dudes. We don't yeah. get this kind of grimier perspective, especially with a woman. I mean, I feel like the gross nerds are usually dudes, but I feel like Trader's kind of a gross nerd a little bit. If we really want to like totally distill it down to the most nerd. basic, he's <laughs> like like she doesn't has very poor hygiene. Does <laughs> does not care about the way she looks. Uh, doesn't clearly doesn't care about her body. She's you know snorting wasabi and taking drugs that may or may not kill her and like she doesn't care about herself like for and, and that's what I like so much about her is that she's like whatever happened to her she's at a point in her life where it's like life or death in a way like she yeah. is willing to die or she is willing to to you know do some pretty horrible things in order to succeed um and it's just not it's not just success is that she wants to be on top yeah you know, and I think, and I had to build a whole life for myself for for her to justify her actions and her her need to be on top. Okay. Um, <clears throat> because we we know nothing about her. Everything yeah. that comes out of her mouth is a lie. Yeah. Well, was, so that's really interesting because I was going to ask if you built a story for her that you had in your head <clears throat> that kind of helped you develop her as a character because I think there's a lot to her that we don't know. And so I was curious just more about how you developed her character and how you got into that headspace. Yeah, I mean, luckily I had time to prep. I think I had a month. Oh, cool, uh, okay. That's so to, rare, to, I feel like it's not that long, but I feel like that's so rare <laughs> to have that much time to prep for an I indie mean, movie. <laughs> for an indie film, that was pretty, like that was a lot of time. Cause like I'm starting a movie on Monday and I read the script once. So like that's the, like that's my, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the timeline I have but for Trader yeah I had like a month and um what really scared me but also what was exciting was the the many characters that she creates to um to, to fraud all it's you know to to, to, to to rip all those people off so I'm like okay accents I need different voices and I was like I don't they don't need to be perfect 
because I don't think she cares, but I think she's like, she is a bit of a chameleon. She is transformative and she knows how to use that to scam people. So I, I worked with a dialect coach and lucky for me, she's also <clears throat> uh, an emotional preparation coach. Her name is Ray Ellen Bodie. Uh, I met her at the Canadian film center when I was there and I, she is so amazing with dialects, but also with, with emotional prep work. And so we, together, we created this whole backstory and she really pushed me and asked some tough questions. And, and we really, you know, I think, I think we did like 10 sessions, 10, like one hour sessions together. Uh, and wow. it was just so much fun because, you know, she's an actress. She, so we both got in there and created this world and I didn't feel the need to share that with anyone. You know, it was really just for me. And once the homework is done, then on set, everything just bubbled up. Like, I was just like, where is this, this emotion coming from this rage, this, but it, because I had done my homework, but I so rarely get the time to do that kind of homework. It was really, it was awesome. That's so cool. That must be so gratifying as an actor to be like, holy cow, like I really made this character like a fully formed, like almost person, not actual person. Yeah. But, like you gave and, like, her so much wanted, more dimension. I didn't want my hair to be done. I didn't, I didn't wear an ounce of freaking makeup. My rosacea, my yeah. skin was so bad at the time. I have um, acne rosacea. And so my skin was flaring up and it was really important to me to not, um, portray a character like her visually needed to sort of match her inner life and what was happening yeah. at the time and I don't I'm sorry but if you're living in a basement and you're snorting wasabi and you're you're scamming people uh and you don't really leave the house and god knows where you got your clothes you're not wearing makeup and you're, you're probably not, not sho you're not taking regular face. showers yeah like no who takes regular exactly. showers anyway but I'm just kidding so, and but also it was like I had to face my biggest fear as as an actor it was it was like to bear myself like it felt I, I was very naked you know and I, yeah. I think in a way it meant a lot to me because I feel like there's you know we live in a world there's so many filters and fillers and cosmetic yeah. plastic surgery you know it's like I was like okay I'm gonna portray a character and I and it's gonna be raw and it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to watch back <laughs> but I think ultimately we need more real characters on on screen people with with texture and dark eyes and you know hairy armpits <laughs> so well, that was, was that like your real hair? hair was that your real yeah, hair that was my was hair yeah, I had a, after I did Titans, I, they bleached my hair blonde for the show and, and it, it started falling out. And so <laughs> great. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to cut it all off. So I, I cut yeah. off like more than six inches. Um, and I, I rocked a bit of a Ruby Rose sort of like pixie cut where I had the, the sides shaved and an undercut. And, and that Hell was like, yeah. I was entering my mushroom cut when I did Trader, where it was like very thick and full on top and, and short below. And we were just like, yeah, that's her jam. Because God knows what happened to her. And maybe she's just like, clearly she understands the feminine power because she uses oh, yeah. her sexuality to get what she wants. But I think in, and I, I think personally, she, she wanted to detach herself from that. And so she looks the way she looks, you know? She's and got Elizabeth Salander out. vibes. Have you seen Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? Yeah. She's yeah. got like Elizabeth Salander vibes a little bit, which I love. Yeah. She's like one of my favorite characters in fiction. So yeah. But I really <laughs> wanted to not be me. And I had done so many rom-coms before where it's like the hair yeah. is perfect and it's perfectly curled and it doesn't move when you run. And you're 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 so, you know, everyone looks fresh faced and dewy. And yeah. And I was like, I want to go the opposite route with this. I love that so much. Okay. I think I know the answer, but I need to ask, did you actually snort wasabi or was it something that looked like wasabi? It was pea paste. Okay. And pea I paste. did snort okay. it. But listen, I think I would have preferred wasabi because I hate peas. I oh, no. hate <laughs> peas. I hate eating peas. They make me gag. I don't know what it is about peas. 
I like beans, but I don't like peas. Um, and so when they, they had the pea paste and I, yeah, that was, there's a scene on the, like on the floor when I keep snorting <laughs> and then I start gagging, Like that was just Kim gagging. Cause it <laughs> so disgusting. So disgusting. But yeah, I did that. Like there's nothing that I don't do in this film. I love it. I feel like it, I checked all the boxes. <laughs> what was perhaps the hardest thing for you or part of scene moment for you to, you know, get in the headspace for, execute, that kind of thing? The opening scene. Oh, okay. When she's scamming um, Mr. Washington. Oh, really? Because okay. I wanted to have, I had it in my head that I wanted to have a very friendly accent and so for me in my head I was like I want a Minnesota like a Fargo accent that I had never done before so I wanted someone that that was very uh disarming yeah. and I wanted uh, so I, I, I had this idea in my head but then on the day Corey wanted me to be still and not move like nothing happening in my face no physical movement and oh. that was because in my voice, I was doing something with my voice and I wanted to gesticulate. I wanted to like lean in and like really act it out, but he wanted me to be so still. And it was a one shot where they like, they're creeping up behind me and then they come around and they end on me. Uh, and it was very choreographed and like the pen, I had to like click the pen at the right time and then lean in, lean back. Yeah, That was like the hardest scene. And I remember we shot it and I wasn't convinced. And then something happened. It was a, what was it? I think it was a steady cam thing where we ended up reshooting it. And I was, I'm glad that we got to do it again. Cause I felt like the lines that settled, the accent that settled and then I got another go at it. But I really, day one was a struggle. And I was like, ah. I can't be still, not when I'm doing the Fargo accent. And you want to be like that person who had, like you want to, again, like you said, like be friendly and like really lean into that accent. But it is so creepy yeah. to have her so still though. It really does that's add. What, that's, like, it Corey is. had a vision. Corey and I, tr the thing is like, Corey is so, he did everything on this. Like he wrote the, the script. Yeah. He directed, he co-produced, he edited he did the sound design and the composition. He did the music. He did everything. This guy is going places and I, I, I want him to take me with him. Um, so yes. I trusted him with my life. Like I was just, I, I, whatever vision that you have, like I wasn't going to argue with him. I was like, yes, yeah. this is what we're doing. And it, it is very creepy. It is a very eerie, yes. what the hell is happening scene. It is really eerie. Well, Kimberly, Sue, Murray, thank you so much today for talking with me about Trader. Oh Everyone, God. Trader is out on VOD. Please check it out if you're looking for a cool single location, tense psychological thriller. This is the one for you. So female led. You. Female led. We love it. So thank you again for taking the time to chat with me today. Thank you, Mary Beth.